Hello chess fans, this is Rick from Chess to Impress with a video on Anand's super sweet knight move. It is also number 5 in this series, The Knight Rules. It is a game from the World Championship match in 2010 that world champion Vishwanathan Anand played against the challenger Veselin Topalov. It was played in Sofia in Bulgaria, so Anand played in the country of the challenger. From this match that Anand won in a dramatic fashion in the last game of the match, I will show you the fourth game that was played on the 28th of April 2010. And the comments I give in this video are from Anand himself. He analyzed this game in the magazine New in Chess and I'm taking the comments from that magazine. Anand was white, Topalov was black. It's the fourth game of the match. Anand opened d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight f3, d5, and g3. d takes c4 and bishop g2. We are in the Catalan variation of the queen's gambit declined. Bishop b4 check. Bishop interposes and a5. And Anand writes, Topalov is going for the line he used in the first game of his match against Kramnik, which was played in 2006, the famous toilet game match. And Anand says, we had checked it a lot during the pre-match camp. So Anand's team had expected this move from Topalov. They were well prepared. Queen c2. Topalov took. Queen takes. And Anand says, even though the queen is losing a lot of time, white now threatens queen g5 with a fork on g7 and on b5. So it prevents black from supporting the c4 pawn. If black plays b5 to protect this pawn, then queen g5 with that double attack. After queen d2, Topalov played c6, a4, b5, and knight a3. A nice idea which one of Anand II's Wojtasek developed in some detail before the match, says Anand. Bishop d7, knight jumps to e5, knight jumps to d5. E4 kicking that knight, it went to B4, and Anand castled, and so did Topalov. Here D5 could have been played, says Anand. White could also have started with this move. The idea is the same, to undermine the B pawn. That is what White's play is about. He played Rook FD1 first, and after Bishop E8, now he played D5. Queen d6, the most sensible reply, says Anand. And knight to g4, that knight was hanging on e5. Queen to c5, knight e3, redeploying the knight. And knight a to a6, developing that piece. Anand took on c6. And here, the best move for black, according to Anand, is to take on c6. Then he gave this line, a takes b5, bishop takes b5, knight a takes c4. Can that piece not just be taken? Yes it can, but then there is rook a c1. And because of the pin, white will win his piece back. But only has a small edge here, according to Anand. So all that after d takes c6 and then taking with the bishop. But the Palov took on a4. And Anand writes, black wants to keep his extra pawn, but concedes white some initiative in return. Anand took on c4 with the a knight. Now Topalov took back on c6 and rook a c1. Anand writes, here white keeps both knights and has lots of threats. Also, black's knights will find it difficult to get into the game. And keep these knights in mind. Compare this position with the final position, those knights will still be there. What are white's threats that Anand talks about? He mentions knight d6, and he mentions this knight going through g4 or through c4 to the e5 square. Those are the threats. And Topalov made a mistake here, he played h6, and Anand calls this a serious error. Immediately, white has a target on the king side, which otherwise he would have to provoke somehow. Perhaps with h4, h5, says Anand. He also says that if black wanted to make some air for his king, then h5 is better, as it prevents the knight jumping to g4. 
So h5 is a better way to make Luft for the king than the move that was played in the game, which was h6. The knight jumps to d6. The queen is now attacked. Queen drop back to a7 and knight g4. One of Anand's seconds, Rustam Kazimjanov, told Anand when he got back to the hotel after this game that he had been trying to make knight h6 work without black having played h6. So knight takes h6 is now a huge threat. King h7 is a move that Anand looked at during the game, but his conclusion was that white has a huge attack. But Ktopalov did not play king h7, he played rook a d8 in this position. And now we get that super sweet knight move from Anand. I already announced it. It is indeed knight takes h6 check. A peace sacrifice to break down the defense around black's king. The knight rules. Vishwanathan Anand is known for his virtuoso skills with all pieces. But especially the knights. And the comment he made here that now it is over. He already had seen that white is going to win this game. Topalov took, queen takes, and f6, e5, and now Anand gives a number of variations. Let's have a look. f takes e5 is possible, but then we have queen takes e6 check, king h7, rook takes c6, and if you take that rook, then there is bishop e4 check. King g7, queen g6 check. Let's continue the variation. King goes in the corner, check. King g8, bishop d5 check. Rook f7, queen g6 check. King f8 and bishop takes f7. White has his material back and his attack is raging on. Another variation after f takes e5 in the position from the game and queen takes e6 check. King h7, rook takes c6. Instead of taking on c6, black can also take on f2. Queen takes f2 check. But the king simply steps aside and Anand says here, the threat of bishop e4 is decisive. And the engine agrees. So all that after the e5 move from Anand and then taking that pawn. In the game... Topalov took on g2 instead. Get that dangerous bishop off the board. He takes f6 from Anand, not taking back the bishop. He writes here, white's moves are not difficult to see. Well, maybe not if you're the world champion, then they're maybe not difficult to see. But I find this a very complex game and I'm happy that Anand provided his own comments in that magazine. And why is e takes f6 so good? Well, let's first play the silly move, bishop a8. Now black is two pieces up, but he will get checkmated. Queen g6 check, king h8, and a very strong move, f7. Threatening queen h6 checkmate, and there is no defense against that. What else is there after e takes f6? Maybe queen h7, trying to swap the queens. But then white plays check, king h8, and a rook lift, rook c4. With a deadly threat of rook h4. And black is not going to survive this. So after e takes f6. Black is in big trouble. Topalov took on d6. That was the move played in the game. Hanan took back. And Topalov played bishop e4. Getting that bishop into the defense. Hanan wrote here that the reason he took some time. To sacrifice the knight was to see the following line. But once he saw it, he could go ahead. He talked about the bishop to d5 instead of to e4. And he gave this line. It's a very nice line. He would then have played rook c4. What a move, putting that rook on a square that is covered by the bishop. Bishop takes c4 and then rook d4. White will still be able to get to the h-file. Because if you take on d4... Then it's checkmate, so you can't do that. And if after rook d4 you take that dangerous pawn off the board, rook takes f6. Then there is rook d8 check. The back rank is now weak. King f7. 
And this is checkmate. And if you don't go to f7 but play the rook to f8, then rook takes as checkmate. So after rook takes d6, we just saw the line with bishop d5. Anand had seen this line when he sacrificed the knight a number of moves ago. In the game, Tapalov played bishop e4. He probably also saw that bishop d5 does not work. Anand took on e6. And what now? Black is under a very strong attack from white's heavy pieces. Knight d3 was played by Topalov. Anand in his comments also gives queen a7. Then queen g5 check. And if you interpose the bishop, then f7 check is the best move. And you can take that pawn in three different ways. Let's look at all three of them. If you take with the rook, then rook c8 check. That rook is suddenly jumping into the game. King g7, queen e5 check, king h6, and the rook switches back to c4. And there's nothing to do against rook h4. And the black king will get checkmated. If we take the f7 pawn with the king, then rook e7 check wins the queen because of the skewer. So that doesn't work either. And if we take the f7 pawn with the queen, then there is rook takes g6 check, king h8, queen e5 check, king h7, and this is checkmate. Very nice queen maneuver there at the end. So let's go back to the game position. Rook takes e6 happened. I want to show you one more variation after queen h7. We played queen g5 check, and if you don't play bishop g6 that we just looked at, but go with the king to h8 instead. Then is a very nice move. Rook takes e4, followed by rook h4. And you cannot take that rook because this is checkmate. We already saw that. So all these variations after rook takes e6 and then queen h7. But as mentioned, knight d3 was played by Topalov. Attacking the rook on c1, rook c2 from Anand. Now the queen went to h7. And f7 check from Anand. That pawn was taken. Rook takes e4. Queen f5. And the last move of the game. Rook e7. Here to Palov resigned. Why did he resign? Let's look at a variation. The threat is queen g7. Checkmate. If you interpose the rook on f7. Then there is rook c8 check. Deflecting black's queen. That's the quickest way to mate. Queen takes rook. And then queen g6 check. King h8. Queen h5 check. King g8. And now you take on f7 with check. And checkmate. Great win from Anand. He called this game his best game of the match. And we saw that beautiful piece sacrifice. Knight takes h6 check. A piece sacrifice does not happen too often in world championship games. And again, this is the final position. Remember Anand's comment on move 20 that Black would find it difficult to bring his knights into the game. Well, those knights since move 20 have only made one move. This knight went to d3. The other one is still stuck on a6, looking at the action from afar. Never mind Anand against Topalov. This is Rick against the chess to impress viewers. I play d4 on the first move. You answered knight f6 c4 g6 and my third move was knight c3 you can vote for your third move in the comments of this video and on sunday in the next installment of the viewers game series i will announce your third move and my fourth move and you can win a chess book at the end of the game i will raffle this book written by international master jovanka huska and james essinger it is called the mating game i will raffle it amongst the viewers who have taken part in this game Every Tuesday I publish a video in the This Pieces Rule series and this time it was the turn of the night, Anand's night. Hope you enjoyed this video, if you did please give it a thumbs up, please subscribe to the Chess to Impress channel and please leave a comment, I will read them all and I will reply to them all. If you like this video it would be great if you could share it on social media by clicking the share button on YouTube. This is Rick for Chess to Impress, thank you for watching.